Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Daily Check-In. This is Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter. And today's topic is going to be the Terraform, Terraform Certified Associate Certification and Exam. So that's what I'm going to be talking about before I get to that couple housekeeping keeping kind of things. At the end of yesterday's video, I mentioned that I wrote a guide. So more on that in a little bit. There's also the podcast, which is available if you prefer this in the audio format, as opposed to live video, or, you know, recorded video, you can go to anchor.fm slash Ned dash Bellavance, and you can find it there. Please subscribe. Um, and please subscribe to this YouTube channel. My subscriber count has been going up a little bit. That makes me feel good that people are watching and hopefully getting some amount of value out of this. I'd also invite you to join me. I do this every day during the week at 1130 Eastern time. So if you are looking for something to do as you ramp up to lunch, join me for 10 minutes. I'll talk. You can submit questions through the YouTube chat, and I'm more than happy to answer things live. And maybe maybe I'll do like an ask me anything at some point. That might not be a bad idea for a future episode. So with that in mind, that's my uh, one or two housekeeping items. Now let's check in. How are you? How's it going? We're almost at the end of the week. Feels like it's been a pretty long week. Not unlike the previous weeks before this. But we're getting through, right? I don't know when this whole chaos started for you, but I feel like I'm starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Things are going to change. So I'm keeping that in mind. I'm staying hopeful and trying to do all the things that, you know, psychologists are recommending to do, you know, to get through this period. So if you're struggling, definitely reach out to your family, your friends, or a professional therapist and talk to them because a lot of us are struggling and that's fine. There's no... You don't have to feel bad about that or, or weak or whatever. That's ridiculous. This is a tough time. And if you need help, go get the help you need. So enough of that. Let's get to the topic at hand, which is the Terraform Certified Associate Exam. The fine folks at HashiCorp decided that they wanted to create certifications for some of their products. And one of their most po popular products is Terraform. And a lot of people are using it. So they thought it would make sense to create an associate level certification that you can achieve to prove you have a level of proficiency with Terraform at a at a associate level. What does that mean? What do, what do I mean when I say associate level? I mean, you don't have to be an expert in every nook and cranny and every provider that exists in Terraform. You just have to understand the key concepts that make up Terraform and how to use it in a basic way. So if you have gone as far as to fire it up in a lab situation or use it in development and you know bang around a little bit and check out all the different features and whatnot, you're probably already halfway there, to be honest. It's not meant to be a super difficult and tricky exam. It's meant to prove that you have a certain level of proficiency, and that's really important. I can say with some authority that's true because... I was one of the exam contributors. I helped write some of the questions and review the questions that appear on the exam. So I can tell you without divulging any of the actual questions that the questions are not meant to trip you up. If you've taken old Microsoft exams where there was like five almost right answers and you're like, well, it's one of those, but I don't know which one. It's not going to be like that. It's not meant to trip you up. It's meant to just test that you have a certain level of proficiency. And if you can demonstrate that proficiency, you'll get through the exam. So that's the good news. Also, it doesn't require that you're super familiar with any of the individual providers. So if you have done work on Azure, but not AWS, or if you've been using it for Oracle or Google Cloud, that doesn't factor into the exam. They're not expecting you to be a master of the AWS provider because the whole point of Terraform is that it is a multi-cloud tool. So you need to understand how to use the tool, not so much the individual providers. So that's another important thing to be aware of. How are they measuring this whole thing? Well, if you look at the website that they have up about this certification, what they talk about is terminal objectives and then enabling objectives. So here are some terminal objectives that you might want to know about. And then here's a bunch of enabling objectives to make sure that you understand that higher level concept. That is how they've laid it out. Now, if you are trying to study up for this, 
looking at those objectives, it might be a little difficult sometimes to parse out what you need to actually study. And for that reason, uh, my buddy Aiden Ermey put together a basic website that had some links to the Terraform documentation that said, here's where you can go in the Terraform docs to read up about these different enabling objectives. And that was a great start. But I looked at that and I said, well, that's one thing, but that's just Terraform's own documentation. And their documentation is good, but it's sometimes a little obtuse in the way it's written. It's definitely written by people who are experts at Terraform, but sometimes it's very difficult for an expert to put themselves in the beginner's shoes. So Aiden and I decided to write a guide for these different terminal and enabling objectives to prepare you for the exam. So that is what we wrote and I published it yesterday. So thumbs up, it's actually published. It's available on LeanPub. You just go to leanpub slash Terraform dash certified. But I thought, you know what? While I'm doing this live stream, maybe I could give you a sneak peek of what's actually in that guide. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and move myself down a little bit so you can see this is the front page of the guide. So it's, I, I found some, uh, some really fun graphics and put together a little cover where we're, you know, we're covering the world in Terraform using infrastructure as code. And that was kind of what I was going for. It's, I know it's silly, but it was fun to do. And if we scroll down through the contents, uh, let's just go straight to chapter two here, exam objectives. So this lays out for you. And I apologize if you're listening to this in audio medium, but this is something that I have, I'm trying to show visually. It lays out in that second chapter, here are all the high level objectives. So you can quickly go, okay, I don't know a lot about interacting with say Terraform modules. So that's the thing that I need to bulk up on. What do I need to understand about Terraform modules? All right, let's go to the Terraform modules chapter. <clears throat> and this has the objective and then the enabling objectives, which are labeled below it with 5A, 5B, 5C, because this was objective five. So looking through this, you can see it gives you, here's the enabling objective. And if we scroll down, it gives you some information about that objective. And also at the end of each enabling objective summary, there's supplemental information, which could be a link to the Terraform documentation or another resource, as well as a key takeaway. So if you're you know, trying to bulk up right before the exam, you can read these key takeaways. And it's just that the main thought about each of those enabling objectives. What's the main takeaway? Like modules are reusable configurations that can be called by a root module or other child modules. Like if you know that, that could really help you when you're trying to take the exam. And there's also code examples in here. So if you're trying to figure out how it actually works in real life, there are code examples right in the guide to help you with that process. So that is the guide that we've put together. Like I said, it's available on LeanPub. There's also a number of different resources that you could use that are not lean, not this guide. And, and you probably want to augment this guide with other things. So if you are preparing for the exam, first of all, there's a great learning site, learn.terraform.io. If you go to that, that has a whole bunch of things that will take you through some basic tasks in Terraform and help you really learn some of the fundamentals there. So you can get that keyboard time that you really need to absorb the information. It's one thing to read it, but I know that personally, I don't really learn something until I've done it and done it multiple times. So that's one way to prepare. Another way to prepare, and if you don't mind listening to the sound of my voice, I have a Pluralsight course called Terraform Getting Started. It's on Pluralsight and Pluralsight, all of the site is free for the month of April. So you could go open an account. You don't have to give a credit card or anything, and you can start watching that course and it's free for all of April. So that's kind of nice to know. There's also a book called Terraform Up and Running. I've read it. I think it's a really good book. If reading is your thing and you want more of a overarching guide to Terraform, as opposed to something that's focused on the exam, then Terraform Up and Running is great. And then lastly, I would say get to labbing. Go ahead and set up an environment and start using maybe the free tier on AWS, or you can sign up for a new Azure account and you get like $200 in credit with that Azure account. And you can create a lot of things in those cloud providers that are 100% free. Like if you create a VPC in AWS and you don't create a NAT gateway, don't do that. Those are very expensive. If you just create a VPC, 
it's free. There's there's no cost associated with that construct because for them, it's just a logical construct. It's not like you're consuming compute or storage. It's just a VPC. So if you just wanted to mess around with Terraform, you could use the network constructs that don't cost anything to figure out how it works against a cloud provider. And Azure, similar situation, if you're just spinning up VNets, again, there's no real cost associated with those because you're not using compute or storage, and that's what they charge you for. So that's two examples where you can easily get up and running. Another thing that, I, and this is kind of a shout out to Azure, and also I think Google Cloud does this, they have a built-in cloud shell that you can run in the browser. When you log into their console, there's a shell that you can launch, and it launches that cloud shell as a container within that cloud provider environment. And I know the Azure one has Terraform pre-installed, the newest version of Terraform pre-installed. So if you wanna get up and running and just being able to plug away, using the cloud shell in Azure is a way to be up and running in, I don't know, how long does it take you to launch a portal? <laughs> it's like 30 seconds to a minute. So you can really get up and running fast and start labbing it up and getting that keyboard time that you really need to understand something. So that's my topic for today. I just wanted to talk about the certification a little bit. The certification is still technically in beta, but I know it's gonna be launching pretty soon. So if you wanna get the jump on it and start studying now, by the time you're done studying and preparing, most likely the certification will be available. And I know that the exam is done online. It's a proctored online exam. So it's not like you have to go anywhere and you probably can't right now. So you can you know take the test at your kitchen table. So that's everything I have to talk about today. Until tomorrow, stay healthy, stay safe. Bye now.